on today's World Inside. A closer look at cross trades relations in 2024, how trade and strong people connections have built bridges across the narrow strait. If they really wanted to enjoy a higher level of growth, mainland China is still the most hospitable market for all our local businessmen and especially farmers and fishermen. If we really promote cross strait relations and exchanges, it will be truly a win-win situation for both mainland as well as Taiwan. Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The upcoming elections of the Taiwan regional leadership is set on January the 13th. In his New Year message, Chinese President Xi Jinping said China will surely be reunified and all Chinese on both sides of the Taiwan Strait should be bound by a common sense of purpose and share in the glory of the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. So how to interpret current people-to-people -people exchanges and trade contacts across the Strait? For insights, let's turn to our panelists. For more discussion on the latest development in Taiwan, joining us in Taipei, Joanna Lei, who is the former legislator in Taiwan's Kuomintang Party, and also in Beijing, Gao Zhikai, chair professor from uh, Suzhou University. He's also the vice president of uh, Center for China and Globalization. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Joanna, I want to check with you the temperature on the island uh, as the, the local election is approaching the final day. And what about the latest uh, uh, assessment of the candidates and also of uh, the prospects after that? I think in the airline, they always teach you to brace if you are going into a dangerous territory in Taiwan, people are bracing for the upcoming election result. We all understand that this will decide on um, our future in terms of cross-strait relations. So people are watching eagerly and hoping for the best possible solution. Mm. What about here from the mainland? As we know, both the mainland and Taiwan belongs to one China. Uh, Mr. Gao, tell me more about how people here are looking at the development uh, leading up to the local election in Taiwan. Thank you very much. The Taiwan local leader election is a very important landmark event in Taiwan's local politics. However, allow me to emphasize one point, that is the cross-strait relations is not going to be decided by this particular local leader election in Taiwan. What will be the deciding factor going forward? That is the firm adherence to the One China policy, regardless of the result of this local leader election in Taiwan. One of the things people uh, anywhere are looking at very closely is the economy and also the prospects of jobs, of trade interactions, of people to people exchanges. Joanna, on that point, uh, may I uh, take a look at some of the history? You know, back in 1978, the trade across the Taiwan Strait is only 15 million US dollars. Now, by the year 2021, the number already is 300 billion US dollars. So uh, you could see the dramatic change there just over a few decades. Now, what are people expecting in terms of trade across the Taiwan Strait and better life quality of people across the Strait? Hmm. Well, Dr. Gao said um, the decision is not made by Taiwan, but Taiwan may receive the short end if the result is not positive. So if you look back from 1979, there is a change in the economic scenario across Taiwan Strait. And if we look closer after 2001, which is the time that both sides entered into WTO, during that time, our trade relations cross strait trade is 44.6 billion. In the last decade, we have dramatic increase to 2022, it reached 319.6 billion, an increase of 616%. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the trade surplus enjoyed by Taiwan has in the same period of time, 2002 to 2022, increased by 397%. 
So if the cross-trade relation goes into a negative territory, then certainly all trade relations across Taiwan Strait will be affected. Economy in Taiwan will be um, receiving the short end of it and will be dramatically impacted, starting from goods to services and even to local service industries. All will be affected. So it's critically important. Mm, I remember uh, there uh, about a decade ago, uh, the stories about the trade, a lot has to do with the fruits. And here, people on the mainland uh, were fascinated by the uh, fresh fruits produced from Taiwan and uh, being carried forward to the mainland really on a very uh, a timely schedule. And it's absolutely fresh. I remember those stories uh, dearly. And now, of course, uh, the circumstances have changed. But uh, from the trade perspective, these people in the business or small running their small uh, enterprises or having their uh, family uh, business, how are they looking at what they are deciding today might have an impact really on their income for the rest of the year? Mm. Um, you actually depicted the best of times. It's the time when cross-trade relations has entered into a new era. Taiwan enjoyed an extremely high peace um, benefit from the mainland China. Now, if you look at our three particular sites, one is the high-tech industries. In recent years, due to the American embargo, people started understanding that how high-tech industries, including semiconductor and everything, is highly integral. Everything Taiwan produced has a very large part going into mainland China and thereby going into the world market. If that is being stopped or uh, in some way restricted, the high tech industry will certainly enjoy, um, will certainly go into a very uh, high level of uh, de decrease. But the second part is the everyday people. If you look at the agriculture and service industry in Taiwan locally, agriculture enjoyed an extremely high welcome from mainland China. It's the time when our export in agriculture goes primarily to mainland China. Starting from recent years, you can see sea bath and also other fruits has no alternative markets to substitute mainland China market. DPP keeps telling people that they can sell things to Southeast Asia, to Japan, to America, but in each and every case, you'll find no substitute to mainland China market for Taiwan farmers or fishermen. So it is increasingly clear to those people that what DPP told them is not the reality. If they really wanted to enjoy a high level of growth and in terms of their own personal wealth, mainland China is still the most hospitable market for all our local businessmen and especially farmers and fishermen. Mm. Mr. Gao, how high is still the enthusiasm from the mainland's perspective uh, when it comes to private entrepreneurs, family businesses, and also the markets as a whole uh, to do business with those uh, from uh, Taiwan across the strait? Uh, are were, are people still as excited as they were uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, you know, about the fresh produce from Taiwan? I know that there are some new uh, development of uh, fruits plantations in here on the mainland as well, uh, producing similar types of fruits. Of course, not as the best quality as those uh, coming from Taiwan, given the natural environment there. So, but, but still, there could be products uh, already uh, that can replace those coming from Taiwan. But how much is this enthusiasm here on the mainland about continue to do business uh, with uh, our compatriots across the Taiwan Straits? Well, I would say for the 1.4 billion people on the mainland, there is tremendous amount of goodwill and uh, friendship and eagerness to do business with our compatriots in Taiwan. However, uh, up to today, uh, there is this have the cake and eat it mentality in Taiwan, especially among those pushing for Taiwan separatism. I personally think it is high time to declare that pushing for Taiwan independence or separatism is anti-peace, anti-stability, anti-prosperity. So people in Taiwan should never and never again expect that they can uh, be acquiescent to the separatist movement in Taiwan. At the same time, they will continue to enjoy the benefits of doing business 
or having exchanges with mainland China. We, we have seen, uh, Joanna, uh, many young people from Taiwan coming to the mainland to study. Uh, for example, right now in the university, who is also see quite many, uh, quite a number of uh, Taiwan compatriots uh, across the mainland. Also, young people coming here to seek a job. Uh, you see the beauty salons, for example. Uh, you see also the companies, uh, private entrepreneurships, uh, uh, you know, people from uh, uh, Taiwan, young people working in Chinese IT firms, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, how do you see these kinds of uh, uh, high desire coming from the younger generation to seek a place here on the mainland? to seek their opportunities where the opportunities are. Hmm, you're absolutely right. There is a very clear trend of young people seeking for the betterment of their own personal life in terms of studies, careers, jobs, and even family to have moved to mainland China. So when I heard um, Dr. Gao saying that Taiwan people needs to be aware of the situation, Actually, a lot of Taiwanese have already made their choices voting by their feet. Now there is a time for Taiwan to make a decision that not only individuals can move, can make their choices, whether Taiwan as an economy will also have to make a choice. And we unfortunately have been forced by the United States, by the Western uh, OECD countries, as well as by current cross-strait relations to have to make a choice. So I agree with Dr. Gao that this is a time that Taiwan has to make a choice, but I also want to underscore that a lot of Taiwan um, individuals have already understood that mainland China is a great future for them personally mm -hmm. in terms of their family, their companies, but also understand that there is a rising China in the 21st century, and it is important for all the talents to join that uprising to join that rising China movement across around the world. So even the high-tech industries have also a lot of talents moving individually or as component companies to mainland China. Mm. Now, it is also critically important to understand that a lot of Taiwanese didn't have the correct information. They probably have not experienced what Tianwei has described. So it is also our responsibility to let everybody to make a decision based on the correct information, not on disinformation. Mm. Not the echo chambers, as some say, of misinformation. Joanna, I'm sure you have uh, got to know many of those young people who have decided to move to the mainland or seek uh, uh, their professional development on the mainland. Tell me one or two, uh, you know, stories that you know that would help our audience who may not necessarily know the overall situation all over the world, uh, also get a better understanding about the realities on the ground. I'll tell, um, I'll, I'll tell two stories. One is a person who started going into the high-tech industry, then she is now hired by a really important high-tech company in Shanghai, heading Greater China Development. If she stayed in Taiwan, she would never have the ability to be hired by a multinational high-tech company to head the entire Greater China Development. So that's on the one end. The other one is a very simple pianist. She and her husband went to Xiamen. They started a very small shop teaching piano. And then she is now a very important local teacher. She gets to grade all the major competitions and she started telling people the new way of approaching music. Mm -hmm. She got a really high recognition based on her difference from Taiwan. She's different from the local piano teachers, and she's different from her approach to music. With that, she's now being um, put on the pedal, actually. She's on all the major forums talking about the new relationship, teaching young children the relationship about music and their life, livelihood. So oh, wow. both sides, you know, a very simple piano teacher, a high-tech um, young manager, both got their 
opportunities way beyond what they could have had mm. in Taiwan. Adding to that, I got to know some students uh, now studying in Peking University and Tsinghua University. Since our uh, organization is based in Beijing, I got to know them uh, through different kinds of assignments. Not necessarily on the stories about Taiwan, but other stories about young people uh, exchanges with foreign countries. I saw their uh, you know, beautiful rising stories uh, uh, from the campus and also their interactions with the students, not only from the mainland, but also international students from uh, different continents. It gives me a very refreshed impressions about, you know, what are the realities? When we read the newspapers, they are only a press story. But when you meet the real people, it is totally giving people a very different impression about how things are moving. Joanna, so I appreciate that, that you're sharing these stories with us. And uh, Victor, I know you are not just uh, full of theories or uh, geopolitical uh, uh, insights, but also you have been interacting with Taiwan compatriots that are working here on the mainland or when you are going to international conferences, interacting with them about both the fate of the island and the future of China. Tell me more about what you have seen, what you have heard in person. Thank you very much. I've been to Taiwan many times. I've met with people from all walks of life in uh, Taiwan, including the government, in the political parties, in the academics, for example. And I always want to further improve my knowledge about what's going on in Taiwan. I think one thing which struck me very deeply is what you just now asked. And I think it's no brainer because people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait we are the same people, we speak the same language, we use the same character, we share a lot of common cultural heritage mm -hmm. and our civilization together. So whoever who has a talent in Taiwan can have a much, much bigger market in mainland to give full play to their talents mm -hmm. and to make as much money as they can dream about. Because if you measure the size of the market, mainland market is multiple, multiple, multiple times that of Taiwan. And if we really promote cross-strait relations and exchanges, it will be truly a win-win situation for both mainland as well as Taiwan. It is time for us to not only acknowledge this fact, but also to make sure that this dream of unification becomes a reality. Mm, Joanna, now things are changing, people say. Uh, on the one hand, the Chinese economy is going through this transition. Now, it takes time to eventually let all the dust settle down because, as we know, economic transition takes a while. And it's uh, still uh, to see as to what the best plans are. At the same time, we also see geopolitics changing in terms of uh, the kind of rivalry and competition some in the U.S. seek against or about China. So with all of these changing in the backdrop, what does that mean for doing business, people to people exchanges between the mainland and Taiwan? I think you, you actually hit on a really important point. When the United States turned its relationship with China, turned its position, then major Taiwan businesses are between a rock and a hot plate. For example, TSMC is now forced to set up its operation in the United States because of so-called national security reasons. So the most advanced chips has to be made in the United States. And a lot of businesses, even though they are not at the scale of TSMC, are still being asked or pushed by their clients, especially from the United States, to move away from mainland China and perhaps move to um, Southeast Asia or even India. It is really important for us to understand that in the world there are two forces. Geopolitical is one, geoeconomic is another. And Taiwan businessmen are following their rational decision making with the geoeconomic forces. To mm -hmm. put it succinctly, geoeconomic forces is now dominated by mainland China in terms of manufacturing, in terms of basic infrastructure. Not only does China has the major trade relations with over 140, 50 countries in the world, it also has relationship with more than 151 countries in the One Belt, One Road initiative. 
So if you follow the economic rationality, you will follow the rising geoeconomic connectivity. So I think Taiwanese businessmen are being caught between the two forces. On the one hand, the America is pushing us to one direction, but on the other hand, the China market, as well as the big China economic um, zone, including RCEP, is pulling us to another side. And Taiwanese businessmen is known to be very pragmatic. They will follow the economic rationality. Mm. Victor, your thoughts on these dramatic uh, changes as we speak, and no dust is settling down as we know. Uh, so how do you see could be the rational choices people in Taiwan uh, to make? Well, at the same time, what does that mean for the future opportunities? I mean, the immediate future opportunities of cooperation across the strait. Well, allow me to emphasize one point. For many years, uh, mainland always told the United States that the Taiwan issue is completely an internal matter uh, within uh, uh, the Chinese community and foreign countries, including the United States, have no role to play, which is correct. However, if you notice at the San Francisco summit meeting between President Biden of the United States and President Xi Jinping of China, the Chinese side made one important point. That is, China hopes the United States will play a useful role in the peaceful reunification of Taiwan. Meaning, China now recognizes that the United States is a very important factor as far as the Taiwan situation is involved. The United States is actually eagerly promoting separatism or Taiwan independence. Having said that, though, uh, we are seeing uh, very interesting development, both in the region and all over the world. Now, uh, we know it is not just about one election. There are policies for economy, for trade, for academic uh, development, for technology that need to come out after the local election in Taiwan. And meanwhile, the mainland will also uh, interact and react to uh, both the election result and whoever will be the local, uh, heading the local authority in Taiwan in terms of policies. So, Joanna, uh, what would be, as a political commentator, your observations given your past the decades of experiences and also your observations of the current, um, as we know, the evolving picture, so to speak? I think you're exactly right. The mainland China has the proactive stance now towards the cross trade relations. And for us in Taiwan, what we need to do is to steer away from the clear and present danger. We need to steer away from the Taiwan independence movement and their correlation with the United States arming Taiwan. That will be a clear and present danger. The upcoming election is an opportunity to steer away from that danger. After we steer away, away from that danger, it may give us opportunities to actually engage in the cross trade manner to really decide on how we should move forward on the peaceful reunification. But if we cannot stop this clear and present danger, then everything will go into a very tight schedule in a very short fuse, and we may or may not have the opportunity to really work on a peaceful solution. Mm. Victor, same question for you mainland perspective, I hope. Well, I think China will continue to promote peaceful reunification and create all conditions so that dialogue can take place between mainland and people in all walks of life in Taiwan. And China most likely will refrain from doing anything which may cause disruption in the economic development in Taiwan. However, we all need to be prepared to take very firm actions in case separatists in Taiwan push the situation beyond the point of no return, or if a uh, or several foreign powers get really involved in promoting Taiwan separatism. Mm. Now we are coming to the end of this discussion. Let's hope peace across the Taiwan Straits and prosperity as well for the year 2024 and beyond. Thank you so much for both of you, Joanna Lei and Victor Gao Zhikai. Appreciate it. 
And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Insight on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on X and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of my team, thanks for being with us. Bye for now.